We had Gary Vee on the show. We've had Noah Kagan on the show. We had Simon Sinek on the show. When I go back and I look at the data for their episodes, the download numbers were no different than any of our other episodes for B2B Growth. I was floored when I saw that data. So Benji, I was at the gym the other day on the Stairmaster and I'm listening to Cody Sanchez's podcast and she's interviewing some guy and she passively mentions, she's like, you know, that's how stuff like this works. You know, I, I bring on someone like you onto the show and it then grows my audience because I've had you on the show. And I heard that and I cringed and I was like, that's not how it actually works. Cody, your show is growing because you're doing an incredible job of building a media empire through your newsletter and through your YouTube channel and through all of the other things you're doing. This guy being on your show does not have a significant impact on your show growing whatsoever. It was just kind of this passing comment, but that sentiment I've heard over and over and over again. There's so many things wrong with that and, and it's rooted in real lived experience. I've done thousands of interviews uh, and it just doesn't work that way. But before I go off on my tangent, what's your thought on guests as a show growth strategy, Benji? If you were using guests as a show growth strategy at its best, you have to either be a top notch interviewer where people are coming because you're asking such hard hitting questions or having such deep conversations that they're still resonating with your questions, which means your personality drives sustained growth over time. We think everybody else is starting a podcast. I'll start a podcast. And then you try to operate two things at the same time. You try to operate, we're going to grow our brand and we're going to talk to cust potential customers. And if you try to do both, you end up doing neither effectively because you're either looking at metrics that are based on audience growth or you're looking at, did we get potential sales conversations from this? And those things are at odds because you would operate with different people in mind when you are creating that content. And so are there people at the very top of the game that are kind of a, a an inner circle of sorts where they all talk to each other and they kind of potentially grow each other's shows? Uh, yes. There's a top 1% that are all, like their household names. They're on a book tour. They're going on like, absolutely that does exist. But for the majority of people, and especially when you're starting something, think about if you start a show and you have a big name on that show, James, you can give examples because you did this with B2B growth, but you think that they're going to spike your show and they might for one episode, but even that is highly unlikely because they're probably not going to share it. But even if they did, in that case, they came to your small show to listen to one episode of their favorite person, and they will never come back because your episodes are not set up in a structure that would allow them to fall in love with your points of view or your show because you're just kind of asking questions and then sitting quiet. And, and when I heard this directly out of the mouth of one of our potential clients recently is when it really hit home for me that they wanted to have guests because their assumption was the guest would be the distribution. Here is the problem in that thinking. You're either going to get somebody on your show that has great distribution because they're a big name in the space. We had Gary Vee on the show. We've had Noah Kagan on the show. We had Simon Sinek on the show. When I go back and I look at the data for their episodes, the download numbers were no different than any of our other episodes for B2B growth. I was floored when I saw that data. I was like, how is Gary Vee's episode not outperforming everything else? It's because Gary has no incentive to promote the, the little podcast that he was interviewed on in the sea of podcasts that he was interviewed on during whatever book he was promoting or whatever thing he was doing at the time. Was he fantastic? Was it great getting to talk to Gary? Yeah, it was awesome. It didn't grow B2B growth at all. And so the people that are the really big names that you want to have on your show, they got big for a reason because they already have a content engine in place that isn't reliant on your podcast. 
The other side of that spectrum is people that you want to interview, maybe they're closer to your buyer persona, maybe they're not a big name, but you think by them sharing it, it's going to bring a lot of distribution to your show and eyeballs to your show. But guess what? That person is not well known in the space already. They might be a buyer, but they're not well known because they don't have a content engine in place. And so even them being on your show, they haven't built the muscle. They, they're, they're not, they don't necessarily know how to format the post well to work on LinkedIn. The algorithm is not a, is not used to them posting. So you either have the big names that have no incentive to post, they've already got their content engine running, or you've got a potential buyer that doesn't post content regularly. So why would they post content whenever, just because you've interviewed them and sent them a few video clips for them to post? That's that's way out of the norm of their regular rhythms. They're just not going to do it. So that's the first problem. You you are making this massive assumption that people are actually going to share your content and they just don't. The way to get around this, and we talk about co-hosted commentary being the way, if you just comment on what those people are doing or saying, the like like there's just as much likelihood that they will share your commentary as they will if you made the show reliant on interviewing them. In in my personal opinion, I might be actually more likely to share something or to talk about something if somebody did commentary on something I said as opposed to actually featuring me in the content itself. So that's that's one way to to get around that. The other thing that we talk about a lot with why guests are a bad show growth strategy is that your show ends up with a disjointed narrative because each guest has a separate POV. You're interviewing Simon Sinek, you're interviewing Gary Vee, you're interviewing all these all these different people. They're they're getting the message about their book out or they're getting their their thoughts out. And so you end up with a bunch of episodes that don't really have a cohesive narrative with your own brand's points of view. Um, because you're sacrificing, you're giving away thought leadership to the guest in every single, uh, it, you know, from episode to episode. It's not your points of view. It's not your thought leadership. So when I was listening to the sales call from Ben, he was like, yeah, we want to have guests on because that's our distribution. And we want the show to be, you know, we want to be the voice of the industry. We want to have thought leadership. And, and Ben just asked him, he was like, how do you think having a show where you're just interviewing external voices that have a different point of view than yours, how is that how is that building your thought leadership? And it was kind of funny to listen to the call because like, I was like, well, you know, I, I guess it doesn't. And that's not that this guy is, is stupid. He's not, he obviously is you know, a marketing leader at a SaaS company. He's not an idiot. Oh, but he's part of the just, majority. Yeah, he is definitely part of the majority, but you just don't, you don't think about it that way unless you've been in the game and have done it and have actually seen how this stuff works. And, and because they, they're just, you know, thinking about starting a show, they don't, they don't know what they don't know yet. The chemistry that you have with a co-host on the show actually matters a whole lot. And if the guest changes, it's just you and a different guest from episode to episode to episode, there's no opportunity for you to build that chemistry where with a co-host with you and I, we can banter back and forth. We can push on each other's ideas. We can we can argue, we can say, ah, like Benji, I think that's stupid. Um, and there's there's no relational risk because we have a relationship with, with one another. We do this every single week where when you're interviewing a potential buyer, you're not gonna push back and tell them their idea is stupid. You're trying to close business with them. So the, it, it just comes across as cheesy. Uh, it's obvious that there's no rapport there uh, between the host and the guest because they've likely only talked one time and it's for that particular podcast episode. So the chemistry is another reason, the lack of chemistry is another reason why guests are a bad uh, show growth strategy. And so that that's that's my rant. I'll, I'll get off my soapbox a little bit. Um, what what are your thoughts on what, I, what I've just thrown down here? The, the, the way that I would sum it up is that the audience goes to those with thoughts. <laughs> so if you think that you can effectively infuse your POV and your why, and you have a strong enough topics where you're like, I have to talk about X 
and I may not be the expert, but I'm bringing my audience along and I know the person I need to talk to, then in that case, you are going to spotlight someone that has thoughts on a topic you chose. Maybe you can infuse your POV, but it's maybe at best. When you know your POV and you're talking to someone that you already have rapport with, to your point, it's a much different conversation. And so the, the shows that I resonate with, I do listen to interview based podcasts, but they are super in a niche. And then I have also thought like the first half, I can think of a couple shows that are like this. The first half of those shows are co-hosted commentary. And then they go talk to someone in the second half about something. And it's like more of an interview. So even in that case, they're being strategic about who's having mic time and, and the thoughts that they're sharing. So I made a little like chart actually for the, uh, for the client who was asking this. And I kind of just compared and contrasted brand versus content-based networking. And I'll run through this really quick. If you are going for a brand based show, then you are thinking about the audience first. If you're going for a content based networking play where you're like, this is about building relationships with potential buyers of my product or service, then you have a guest focus. You are just trying to spotlight them. If you're going for a brand play, then it's about audience growth. If it's content-based networking, it's about account contact. Did you effectively reach out to the people at that company? And that's all you should be measuring. And you should not assume that you can do both at the same time effectively. If you're trying to grow a brand, then you're thinking about thought leadership. What are our thoughts? Do we have a honed in point of view? Do we know our why? If it's content-based networking, you're guest spotlighting. You're sharing their POV. You're creating micro videos for them to put on LinkedIn and you're making them look awesome. Okay. Now we go to the hosts. If you think about creating micro videos, who are going to be in the micro videos when you have guests on the show? Absolutely the guest because they are spending time on your show. And that's how you pitch them as you say, like, we're going to create assets for you. But if it's a brand play, then your hosts need to be sharing stories. They need to be sharing insights. They have to have a point of view to be in the micro videos. I work with so many people who like, that's the work is when you're doing media strategy, you're coaching them on how to tell stories on how to be more effective on mic on camera. What are you actually going to share so that we can have some of your thoughts? If it's a brand play, it's a top of funnel play. If it's content based networking, it's a bottom of funnel play. Good luck executing both of those at the same time. And then the last one here to wrap it up, if it's a brand play, it's shareable by the audience. But if it's content-based networking, it's shareable by the guest. So if you're trying to resonate with an audience, then think about Instagram as the perfect platform for what I'm about to say. So many of the people that I follow, when you look at their stories, it's they saw something and it resonated with them enough to reshare. That's That means that the accounts that are growing on Instagram are shareable by the audience. The, the clips are resonating with people and they're like, oh, I, the rest of my network needs to see this. But if you're creating, hoping that you're building relationship with the person that just guessed it on your show, you're really sharing them a clip that makes them look awesome so that they kind of get an ego boost and they're like, oh, I was on a podcast. Those are just massively different strategies and ways of thinking. And so I get why people try to combo both because the sales team is going to be like, what the heck are we doing with our podcast when you're trying to build brand and it's top of funnel and they're like, where are the MQLs from this? But at the same time, if you don't build the brand in a way where you effectively showcase your narrative or your point of view, like that's just, that's how content works. You have to, like anybody that has grown an audience has legitimate point of views and it's personal. And that's why so many brands just aren't effective. Here, here's what I think it comes down to. Um, if you are not willing to put in the work to really define your brand's narrative, what, what, what is your core belief statement? What is the thing that drives everything you do? For us, it's 97% of your market is not ready to buy right now. Only 3% of your market is ready to buy, yet we've oriented all of our marketing focus toward trying to engage 3% of a market. And that's just, it's an inefficient way to do marketing. 
if instead we focused an appropriate amount of resources to the 97% of your market that's not ready to buy now, but will be, you can actually get a whole lot further, go a whole lot faster. And so, um, so that's our kind of core belief. So we, we gotta, we gotta start focusing on how do we engage that 97%. And so many brands don't have that. They don't, I mean, we, we know this because we, we go through the launch process with our clients and we realize like, man, there's some like deep brand positioning work that, uh, that needs to be done here before we can define like, what is the core belief that's going to be driving the show? I think a lot of brands just don't necessarily know that that's the kind of work that needs to be done. If you truly want to build thought leadership, to build affinity yep. through this, through new media. Um, and, and when you look at as when you study as many creators as we studied to your point, they all have this core belief. They ought like Peter Atia on the, you know, I, I follow Peter with all of his health related content and a core belief of, of his is that we should not just be trying for lifespan to increase our lifespan. We should be trying to increase our, our health span. We want to live longer and be happier as we're living longer. And so the things he talks about all relate kind of and roll up to that idea. Cody Sanchez, like, Hey, there's this massive generational divide between all these boomers that are retiring and they don't have anybody to take over their business. And there's all these boring businesses of, you know, laundromats and dry cleaners and car washes and lawn care companies that have no succession plan. The kids don't want the business because it took mom or dad away from home too much. And, and so, and that's the narrative that drives her. It's like boring businesses, boring businesses, boring businesses. I've heard Jay Klaus talk about how you want to be associated with something. You want to be associated with a word or the phrase as a brand. And that core belief statement is, I think, uh, in large part, what, what ties people to, uh, that, that phrase that people are going to connect you with that's brand building. Um, and I, I, it's, it's hard to do. It's an art. Um, but, uh, that that is, I think, what is keeping a lot of people from exploring this because they haven't necessarily done that work. Uh, so anyway, that's that's my my last rant, and uh, uh, and we can we can close it out here. We are out.